Okay, and now for the next talk, we have Jeannie Garashi. Hi, Jean. Hi. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, Jean is a senior software developer specialized in GIS field with more than 10 years of work experience in Japan and Eastern Africa. His main interest is how GIS can collaborate with water supply management efficiently. He's also a main contrib contributor in the translation of some QGIS documents, QField, and input to Japanese. So now, if you want to, I'll leave you to your presentation. And we'll see at the end for the questions. Sounds good? Thank you for introduction. Yeah. Welcome. Let, let me share my screen. Yes. Perfect. See you in a bit. Yes. Bye. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, some phosphogenic software development which I did with water utilities in Kenya and Rwanda. And those technologies using map box vector tiles. And first of all, who am I? Yeah, and yeah, I am as open source GIS software developer for more than ten years. First, I worked in Japan, and I started to work in Kenya and Rwanda from twenty fourteen to twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah, and at that time, I was involved in water supply project of. JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency. Yeah. And uh, now, actually, I am in UK, yeah, and I'm studying MSc Water Sanitation and Health Engineering at the University of Leeds yeah, to gain more knowledge about water. Yeah. And uh, this phosphogy is sad, sad phosphogy for me. Yeah. I, I'm participating from Dar es Salaam, yeah, and I'm also contributing translations to Japanese language for Q field input, RISMAP, and GIS open course where, yeah. And uh, that software I developed with them currently being used uh, in six urban water supply system in Kenya and 1,081 water supply system in Rwanda. And this is uh, some example of implementation of Narok water in Kenya. Maybe you can scan this QR code by your smartphone or tablet, try to see the WebGIS for Narok water system. Yeah. And uh, before going to talk about the software, I want to talk about general challenges of GIS implementation in water utilities of East Africa. And uh, first of all, they tend to have this problem, lack of budget. So they normally don't have budget to use ArcGIS also. GNSS devices and for system, this is very critical. They can't have server, especially in small water utilities, and also maybe transportation problem is happened. But uh, thanks for phosphogy. Yeah, now we have QGIS yeah, instead of ArcGIS, and for data collection. We can use Q field or input. Yeah. So at least these two can be solved by host4g. Yeah. But if we we can use QGIS or ArcGIS, there is still problem of lack of knowledge and skills. QGIS require high GIS skills and uh, very difficult to train all stuff in water utilities. Yeah. Maybe only we can only train the 
GIS officers, few GIS officers only. Yeah. And also the donor, World Bank, like African Development Bank, normally do data collections at the beginning of their project. But because no one can maintain data and no one utilizes the data, GIS data can be abandoned repeatedly and the donors need to start the same work again at the beginning of the project. So how can we manage and utilize GIS data effectively and affordably? This is my question since I started working in Kenya from 2014. And this is my journey of hospital development of vector tiles. I just started from last year. And in last year, January, I was involved in vector tiles project. And finally, I found the solution to provide sustainable management for water utilities. And I just started development of vector tiles with Narok Water Kenya. And uh, then I introduced that technology to Rwanda in, Jan in July. And uh, after that, I introduced Nakuru Water Kenya, the Nanuki Water Kenya. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, I got some support from United Nations Vector Tile Toolkit. Yeah. So thanks for the United Nations yeah. to, to give me some know how of vector tiles, yeah. And this, I'm using vector tiles uh, by open source and as open data. This advantage is we can use GitHub pages for hosting free of charge as open data. And WebGIS nowadays, a lot of people are using Google Maps. So WebGIS interface is not necessarily high GIS skills. All of stuff in water utilities can use WebGIS because a lot of people can use GIS data. GIS administrator also have motivation to keep that up to date. Yeah. So this approach is very powerful in Africa, especially in small water utilities. And I developed software uh, for following three types. Yeah. First, I developed the automated procedure to generate, deploy, and style vector tiles for free of charge. And next, I developed useful Mapbox GLJS plugins. Then finally, I developed other features to use open building data from Google and synchronizing with Open Africa. Yeah. And, uh, but this talk is going to talk about just software I developed. If you are more interested in implementation of water utilities, you can watch the following uh, talks after these presentations at 9.30 in Fumahuaka room for Nanyuki Waters presentations, Kenya, and from 10 a.m. in this room about the Rwanda's water, uh, Rwanda's implementation. Yeah. And, and this, from now, I am introduced uh, uh, some strategy how to deploy vector tiles sustainably. Yeah. And this is the basic strategy to sustain operation of vector tiles. And because small water utilities can't have servers, we just use local machine which installed post GIS and Docker. And hosting for hosting, we use GitHub pages. Yeah. Yeah. And that those hosting data can be used from QGIS or uh, browsers. Yeah. 
and I I created some boilerplate for vector tiles automation tools. You can check this GitHub page, uh, GitHub repository. Yeah, and this one, this boilerplate is just extract data from PostGIS to create vector tiles by Tipekanu and upload the GitHub page. Yeah, and we automate the procedure by using task scheduler of Windows. Yeah, because we are using PostGIS, so it is very easy to adapt any database. Just you modify SQL, yeah, uh, can create vector tiles. For style file, we also developed created some SVG icons for specific water assets. So maybe also sprite file creation tool is compiled in this repository. You can use it. Yeah. For client applications, this boilerplate is already installed all plugins I developed. So you can just copy or fork yeah, to use it. Application will be hosted at GitHub pages as default. Yeah. And from here, yeah, I, I'm going to introduce uh, some useful Mapbox GLPS plugins I developed. Yeah. yeah, my plugins has eight plugins. Yeah, all plugins are open source license. And demo website is available in GitHub pages. And also code sandbox example is available. And first, if you want to export Mapbox map to ping or JPEG image or PDF, this plugin Mapbox GL export is for you. Yeah. You just use this plugin and add control. Yeah. You can export any images. Yeah. And next, I developed this Mapbox GL legend plugin because I'm a very lazy person and I don't want to create legend by myself one by one. So I just developed this plugin to automate to create legend from style.json. Yeah. I think this is very useful yeah, for Mapbox users yeah, to know the legend. Yeah. And uh, next is Mapbox GL elevation plugin. This one in background, it uses Terrain RGB and extracts uh, elevation from Terrain RGB and also at the same time can measure the distance. Uh, this elevation is very important for water utilities, especially for planning. So also can download elevation data from, from uh, this website as GeoJSON format. How to create line RGB? Yeah, this one also, I wrote some documentation in this QR codes website. It is not very hard. Yeah, you can use this approach to create your terrain RGB to host in this GitHub pages. Yeah. And next I developed Baruhara Bampbox GL Baruhara plugin. This plugin can easily provide the function features of isochrome map, isochrome features. Yeah. And uh, you can know the distance of by a bicycle, or by car, or on foot. Yeah. And this one also very useful for planning purposes or operation of water, water assets. But well, of course, you need to set up your own Baruhara server. But uh, there is 
a free tire program offered by GCP. So for small water utilities, this free, free tire program is enough. Yeah. So you can host Valhalla for free of charge. Yeah. And this one, style switcher. I just hooked original plugin and add the new feature to save current style inside the URL. So uh, water utilities staff can share URL with coordinate and style selected. And this area switcher plugin is easily switch the place quickly. Yeah. This is also very useful if water utilities manage systems in different places. And this pop-up plugins can, can see the attributes, each features. Yeah. And this one, I didn't customize anything, but original plugin did not, is not hosting to, in NPM. So I just forked and published the plugin to NPM. Yeah. And next, yeah. This one, this, this year, I think most of people are, be, are aware of open building data offered by Google. Yeah. Google this year, they published open building data for the entire Africa as open data. And I now I developed a script up to convert open building data to vector types. Uh, that tools already in GitHub repository. You can compare the difference between Google and OpenStreetMap. I think this is very powerful in Africa, especially in rural area uh, for planning purposes. Yeah. And that open building data is more than 50 gigabyte vector tiles for entire Africa. So thanks for Geolonia uh, for hosting our open building tiles. Yeah. Maybe Geolonia, very few people know. Yeah. Geolonia is a new startup company based in Japan. And they are hosting OSM-based vector tiles for Japanese users. And they offer most of developed software as open source license. Yeah. So, and finally, I I am introduced to some approach to synchronize vector tiles with Open Africa. The Open Africa is managed by Code for Africa, and in order to manage all open data in African countries, and I developed some script and using GitHub action to synchronize vector tiles data to open Africa. So uh, we, we can let African people know the uh, data is available as open data. This is also very important, I think. And uh, what's next from uh, this year? I think, yeah, I should move to MapLibre from MapboxGL. Currently, only export plugin is available in MapLibre. And I want to develop also hydraulic modeling features like Epanet to utilize elevation data from Terrain RGB. This is very useful, I, I believe. And the, all documentations is available in this website. So if you are interested, you can check later. And about feedback and collaborations, questions, feedback, any idea, any collaborations are most welcome. Please make an issue and pull request anytime. And maybe you can hook or start if you like the plugins. Yeah. The thank you for your attention. Yeah. This is my presentations, yeah, that's all.
thanks Jane for everything, for your presentation. Um, we now have a couple of questions on Venueless. Um, the first one is about your plugin, which version of Mapbox uh, do you use? If it is version 2.x, I wonder about the license. Do you have any idea of expanding the plugin into Map Libre or other libraries in the future? Yeah, if you I think our, our plugins only support for Mapbox GL V1 plugin, which is open source. Yeah, but I have never tested in V2, but maybe plugin can work in Mapbox GL V2. Yeah, and I think uh, move my migrating to map library is not so very hard. Yeah, so maybe I will do that if uh, I have time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you a lot. Um, let's wait a bit in case we have some more questions. Okay, well, since um, there appears to not, yes, sorry, there's one more question. For the water vector tiles, who might want to use those or for what? I guess that's the uh, Yes, that I think the advantage of vector tiles is very light data and fast rendering. So, especially in Africa's rural area, there is the internet is still poor, so maybe vector tiles have advantage of that. And also, maybe WebGIS is normally easy to use, yeah. maybe more user friendly compared to uh, QGIS or ArcGIS or such as GIS applications. Okay, thank you. Another question. Just being curious, but how many hours did you take to develop all of the environment? Uh, yes, yeah. Because I already established the procedures, maybe. If there is a post-GIS database, I think only one or two weeks is enough to uh, create all the environment. There's um, another one. What is your advice on collaborating with partners in areas far from each other, like Japan and Kenya? Is the time difference a major difficulty in collaboration? I think, yeah, maybe if a collaboration between Japan and Kenya, maybe time difference is not a major difficulties, maybe language might be a difficulty because most of Japanese can't speak English. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so language is a, like, yeah. a worse barrier than time, time difference. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. I wasn't expecting that one, but it sounds accurate. Um, you're receiving greetings and congratulations on Venueless. So now we will be wrapping up here and we'll yes. leave the spot for uh, the next talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for your talk. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see we'll see each other around. Yeah. Goodbye.